We turn now to sport and to the woman who claimed two silver medals at the World Weightlifting Champs in California, the first New Zealand weightlifter to win silver at the Worlds. Her name is Laurel Hubbard. She's a transgender athlete and her presence in women's weightlifting competitions isn't always welcomed. Where other people achieving first for the transgender community tend to be celebrated as pioneers, Laurel Hubbard has faced criticism from fellow competitors and some viciousness on the internet. Still, she lifts. But today, after returning from the World Champs and with criticisms from the Egyptian camp, the unease of the Australian Weightlifting Federation and the outright abuse of some echoing through the sport, she spent the day speaking to the media. I watched her doing interviews as we waited to do ours, and I was struck by the fact she'd far rather be lifting weights. Being transgender is simply being who she is. It's not some form of campaigning or activism. Yeah, that's true. Um, I'm not going home to... Uh pop the champagne corks and uh, 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 get too rowdy. I think it's uh, like any athlete, you go home, you just put the shoes back on and you just uh, keep on keeping on. Like any athlete, that's all you want to be, isn't it, a weightlifter? But at the same time, you are transitioning and therefore people want to have that discussion with you about being a transgender weightlifter. Is that something you relish, welcome, are even remotely interested in participating in? Look, um, I am who I am. I'm not here to change the world. I just want to, you know, be me and just, uh, yeah, do what I do. Lift weights. That's exactly right. What's it feel like when you lift weights? What's it feel like when you really get a lift right? Oh, it's such a thrill. I mean, the barbell, I don't want to say it's, it becomes weightless, but it feels like it's alive in your hands and uh, it just makes all of those training sessions worthwhile when you can just uh, yeah, get it in the spot that it needs to be in. And all your competitors get to do that in isolation. It is just simply the lift that counts. But when you do it, it, it is invested with a larger significance and other conversations the Egyptian the Australian coach is saying hey we don't think this is fair how do you respond to that look as an athlete all I can really do is to block that out because if I try and uh, take that weight on board it just makes the lifts harder so all I can really do is just focus and lift it's really important for people to understand this is not a subjective measure. There is science attached to this, isn't it? And the science is explicit, and you absolutely satisfy the IOC science, which is around testosterone levels. If your testosterone levels are below the figure required and have been for the preceding 12 months, end of story. It's that simple, isn't it? Look, that's true, but um, the science is evolving, and the position of the uh, IOC is evolving too. What most people probably don't realise is that I actually satisfy the requirements of the 2003 Stockholm Consensus, which were the original rules that the IOC agreed upon to allow the participation of people like myself. So I am not competing under a recent rule change. Uh, I'm competing under rules which have been in place now for 14 years. And you are competing as a person with the same rights as everyone else, which is to try and be the best you can be in your chosen field, that you have dedicated an enormous amount of time and training to. And I looked prior to coming here today at some of the comments, some of the responses, some of the feedback you get, and to be frank, it's cruel. Yes, but um, look, people believe what they believe, and when they're, I suppose, shown something which is maybe new and different to what they know, it's instinctive to be defensive. So... Is it? Should it be? Look, I can't really speak for other people and what they feel, what they think, or what they believe. And it's not really my job to change what they think, what they feel, or what they believe. But uh, I just hope that they look at the, the bigger picture rather than just uh, trusting their... whatever their gut might, uh, might have told them. When you made the decision to honour who you were by becoming a woman and you would say of course that all along you've been one just disguised as a man did you think of giving up weightlifting or was it such an abiding passion and love and you had devoted so much time and energy and training to it that it was worth all of this to keep with it one of the misconceptions that's out there is that uh, um, 
I've trained all my life and the transition has happened relatively uh, late in the piece. What people probably don't realise is that I actually stopped lifting in 2001 when I was 23 because it just became too much to bear. But uh, the world has changed of course and I feel like I'm now in a place where I can train and compete and uh, cope with all of that. When you said it became too much to bear, what did? Oh, just the, the pressure of trying to fit into perhaps a world that wasn't really set up for people like myself. A, an archetypal male kind of world? Yeah, look, to be honest, that's why I started doing weightlifting so many years ago, because it was archetypally male. I thought perhaps if I tried something that was so masculine, perhaps that's what I would become, but uh, sadly that wasn't the case. Well, sadly, what's sad about it? I mean, aren't you becoming you now? Well, sad in the sense that uh, it maybe would have made some of the darker periods in my life a bit more manageable. Can we talk about your goals? Two silvers. Uh, it's tough and highly competitive and people want to win. How do you think you're going to go uh, in the Commonwealth Games? Look, it's absolutely true that people want to win and when I missed that uh, last snatch lift in Anaheim, the anguish on my face was real. You know, I wasn't soft pedaling that lift, I was putting everything into it and it hurt when, when I dropped it. But uh, I'm hoping that uh, I'll be able to draw on that as I build towards the Gold Coast and uh, who knows, perhaps next time I won't let the gold slip through my fingers. Do you have a new PB in mind? Oh, <laughs> look, every weightlifter is motivated by uh, the prospect of new PVs. So. And what's yours? Go and let us into it. What would you like to be able to lift on the Gold Coast? I would like to be able to complete six successful lifts. I think if, uh, if, I, if I concentrate on that, the rest will take care of itself. You're brave, aren't you? A and you didn't? It strikes me that you aren't a person who set out to be publicly brave, but you sit here having to explain yourself. And I can't recall the last time I interviewed an athlete who had to explain themselves in the way you do. I'm not sure that I'm any braver than anyone else. I'm just, just me. Well, just you. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Good, for the, uh, good luck for the Commonwealth Games. I hope you get your six successful lifts and I, I hope you bring home the medal that you want. Thank you, John. Thank you so much. Laurel Hubbard.